one. First thing we're looking at here, find the slope and the y-intercept. So they give us a line. This is exactly what we just did on the bell ringer. They give us a line that says 8x plus 3y equals 46. And if I'm asked to find the slope and the y-intercept, those are both told to me if I can rewrite this in slope-intercept form. Do the, that's key in a lot of these 20 questions that you got here. So I'm going to solve this for y. I'm going to subtract the 8x. So that will look like 3y is equal to negative 8x plus 46. Now my y is being multiplied by 3, so I'm going to divide everything by 3. So here that would just be y. Here that's negative 8 thirds x. And here that's 46 thirds. Just divided everything by 3. So my slope is what's in the m spot. Negative 8 thirds. That alone tells me the answer. There's only one of the choices that has the right slope. If there's another one and I need to keep going, my B is 46 over 3, and to write that as an ordered pair, remember that's 0, 46 over 3. So those two answers, I kind of marked my negative out on that. Let me make it bigger. Those two answers get you choice C, no. as in crazy, or chase, or, or crazy chase. Correct. Chase. Oh, that's red. good. That's good. All right, guess what you do on number two? Wait. Same thing. No, oh, I'm waiting. Same thing. Write it in slope-intercept form. Got it? Okay. All right, so on number two, it gives us 10x plus... 2y is equal to 3, so exact same thing. We're going to solve it for y. So I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. So give me 2y equals negative 10x plus 3. The direction said to write it in slope-intercept form, so that means solve for y. So I've got to undo that multiplication of 2. Bless you. Divide everything by 2. So that's y equals negative 5x plus 3 halves. Is that slope-intercept form? You know, x plus b, Mason's correct amundo, that's it. Which is c, as in Caitlin is crazy. Mm -hmm. That's c? Yes, ma'am. Three's kind of a, a baby question there because it tells you to find the slope, but then they've already set the formula up for you. So all you have to do on three is the subtraction. So if you look at that on the numerator on number three, eight minus four is four. On number three, the denominator, negative six minus negative six is zero. What's four over zero? Undefined. 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 Good. Undefined. Cannot divide by zero. So number three would be A, as in A. That's all I got, Rachel. Apple. Oh, I knew someone would be specific like that. All right, there was one uh, similar to number four on one of the assignments that you had the last couple of days, and people were like, is it really that easy? And yeah, it is. But choice A perplexed me for a minute. Did anybody on number four choose A? That, that one just it made me chuckle a little bit, because when do we ever write an ordered pair with a word, you know? But it is the correct word, but it doesn't represent the numbers on the graph very well, so... Got to make sure they got two graphs. Don't read the wrong one. It wants the year 2006, so you're reading the bottom graph. June, count across. January, February, March, April, May, June, June 6. So you go across to 6. And how high up would you be on that graph? Pretty dang close to 50. So the ordered pair would be 650 on that one. Which is C, as in California. There was somebody in first period that chose the one that said June 50. I try not to laugh out loud. There is hard. All right, number five. We all right? I got to write an equation of a line in standard form that goes through those points. And we've said every kind of line except for a vertical line has a slope. So anytime you're told to write an equation for the line and you don't know the slope, that's going to be your first job. Find the slope. 
So here I'm going to subtract my y's. That'll be 5 minus negative 8 over subtract my x's. 0 minus negative 5. So that's 13 fifths is my slope. All right, now I've got options on what I go, what I do from here. I've got two points and I've got a slope, so I could use one of those and write it in point slope form and then simplify that, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Or I could just use one of those points and that slope and put it in slope intercept form and solve for b and then go from there, y equals mx plus b. I did it this morning, I did it in slope intercept form, but I won't, wouldn't mind doing point slope if that's what y'all did. Did anybody try that one one way or the other? Nobody in first period did I have to smack some people. None of y'all tried it either? Okay, then I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to write it in slope intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. I use the point 0, 5 because zeros are easy to work with. So you can pick either one. 0, 5, I'm going to put the 0 in the x spot. I'm going to put the 5 in the y spot. already got my m to put in, so I got 5 equals 13 fifths times 0 plus b. So that pretty much tells you the 0. Now, I'm going to tell you I could have known that without even plugging that in, right? Anytime you've got an ordered pair written 0 comma something, that has to be on the, that's on the <coughs> y-axis, that has to be your b. So I showed you algebraically here that my b is 5, but you could have got that just from right here as well. Okay, so in slope intercept form now my equation is y equals 13 fifths x plus 5. But of course there's no choices that say that because the choices say, the question says to write it in standard form. So I got to get it to ax plus by equals c form. So I need to move the 13 fifths x over there. So I'm going to subtract that. That'll get me negative 13 fifths x plus y is equal to 5. There's not any choices that say that. Remember, in standard form, we've got to have integers, no fractions there. So I need to multiply it all by what? Negative 5. 5, but even better, negative 5. The reason 5, because I don't cancel out that denominator, so I'm going to multiply by negative 5. Negative times negative is positive. 5 over 5 cancels out. you got 13x. Negative 5 times y is negative 5y. And negative 5 times 5 is negative 25. I bet you we've probably got a choice that says that. How about B, as in Boomland? Boomland. Boomland. You ever been there? I have it so much. Four pounds. Yes. Four. Uh, what? <laughs> Chasing the book. Page two when you're ready. Ready. You're out, Michael. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I'm sorry. I am too. Uh, it's been a long week. Still got a lot to go. Yeah, no, I'm very busy. Like three projects. Yep. Busy weeks go fast, but where are you out? I was going slow on them. So. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like this one here is going really fast. Yeah, we're already like in week six or seven or something like that. Wait, for real? For real? I feel like we're like been here for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the way I feel. Yeah. 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 That's the way I feel. All right, yeah. number yeah. six. Yeah. Did you think that's a function A or B? B. I think B. It's not a Zane is correct. It is not. And what I wrote on mine, so you'll know, because you know you need to be able to to look at these and know why you chose them, so that you can use them on your test. It's not a function because I had that repeating. So that's what I did on my test. Is I circled those two negative eights. If an x repeats, it can't be a function. All right, seven's a pretty easy one. They give you the input output table started already. I got a 260. They give me the equation x plus y equals 6. And this is like fourth grade level math right here. Plug a 2 in, 2 plus what equals 6. Well, that has to be 4. Plug a 6 in, 6 plus what equals 6. Well, that has to be 0. Plug a 0 in, 0 plus what equals 6. What's that got to be? Uh, six. six. So should have got C for number seven. Seven. 
Mm -hmm. That's how Chase would say it, so I'll say it like that. <laughs> oh, Chase. All right, what about the slope of... Huh? I got you, Dustin. I got you. Use some words there. <laughs> Okay. All right. What about the slope on number eight? What kind of slope does a vertical line always have? Say it loud, Aaron. Undefined. Undefined. Mr. Aaron is correct. C as in so, cash. Or cookie. Vertical is the one that doesn't have this. What, yep, what right. What horizontal does is zero. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, NED. Uh, zero. Yep. Positive. Yep. Negative. Oh. <coughs> Covered it up. There we go. Does that help? Good, 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 good. All right, I guess what we're doing on number nine, write another equation. There's lots of equations in this linear thing. Isn't that odd? What is on number nine, the point zero two? What uh, does that s uh, signify? That's the y-intercept. Very good, Aaron Zane. So on number nine, you with me, Dustin? Yeah. Okay. On number nine. I've got y equals m x plus b. Why did I know my b was 2? Because if it's 0 something, that's always your b. That has to be over 0 up 2 has to be the y-intercept. Okay, so I wrote an equation, but I didn't finish it yet because the directions say in standard form. So i got to move the x over. It's a negative, so I'm going to add it. Custom, we're going to put that up. 7 ninths x plus y is equal to 2. Now, what would we multiply this thing by? Nine. Uh, nine. nine. Good. And I'm not going to do negative nine this time. I could, but I, I wouldn't find the right choice I needed. Why am I going to do just positive nine? Because the x will be already negative. Right. I already got a positive x, positive a, so I want to keep it that way. Nine over nine is cancel. Seven x. D. Nine y. Is it dog? Eighteen. So I'm in standard form. Hope we see a choice there and we do D dynamite. Get it, Mason? All right, number 10. Find an equation of a line that goes through negative 6, 5 and is parallel to that line. So i got to know about parallel lines, what their slopes are. Slopes of parallel lines are? Uh, uh, opposite equal. reciprocals or same? Parallel. Parallel, same, right? Good. If we've got parallel lines, their slopes are the same. That was cool, Dustin. We got perpendicular lines, their slopes are opposite reciprocal. So we're looking for same slopes. So if I gotta have the same slope as that line, I need to know what its slope is. So it's negative 7x plus 5y equals 57. I'm gonna solve that for y to find its slope. So I'm gonna add 7x, 5y equals 7x plus 57. And then I'm gonna divide by 5. 7 fifths x plus 57 fifths. So it's got a slope of 7 fifths. So that's got to be the slope of my line. <coughs> now, luckily, these choices are written in slope intercept form, so I don't have to worry about taking it back to standard form. I'm looking at the choices, and I only see one that has the right slope. Y'all see it? Yeah, I see it. C. No. Oh, wait, what number are we on? B. It would be B. Very good. But what if there's oh. more than one that has the right slope? What would I do to keep going? Get that B. That would be good. I'd have to use that point they gave me and plug it in to find B. So I'm going to do that. Y equals, so 5 equals M, which is 7 fifths, times X, which is negative 6, plus B. 7 fifths times negative 6 is negative 42 fifths. So to solve for B, I would add 42 fifths to both sides. That seems like a lot to add there, but 5 is the same as five. 25 fifths. So 25 plus 42 would be 67. So my B is 67 fifths. Is that what the choice has? Yep, 
Choice B has 7 fifths X plus 67 fifths. B is in boom land. minus 2y plus 3. <coughs> Alright. Directions for this one say to write in slope intercept form. y equals mx plus b. We need to solve this for y. I told you there was a ton of these like the bell ringer. First thing I would do here Add would x. be uh, subtract, n, x. subtract x. x. Add a boy out of here. Negative 2y equals negative x plus 3. Now what? Divide by negative 2. Yes ma'am. y would equal and I said this on the bell ringer, I could write, a negative by my negative is going to make a positive. I could write x over 2, but that's the same as a half x, and then minus 3 halves. And I believe that's all they asked me to do, right? What choice was that, Aaron? C. C. Cuckoo. Sometimes cuckoo's a K. I never know when it's what. I think when it's Cocoa Puffs, it's a C. But when it's a Cuckoo Puff, it's a K. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Happy I got it, right? I was really guessing. Alright, 12. We did some of these fill in the blank ones at the end of class one day, like number 12. It says the boundary of the graph will be a solid or dashed line. The shading will be above <coughs> or below the line. First thing, I know that it's got to be dashed because it's just a greater than. It doesn't have an equal bar underneath it. If it had an equal bar underneath it, it would be solid, right? It's just a greater than, so it's got to be dashed. Now, I'm not going to get very, very technical on this, but I do want to know a little bit about what the graph looks like so I know where my test point falls on the line. It's got a y-intercept of negative 5 fourths. That's just a little bit more than negative 1. And then it's got a slope of negative 3. So from that point, it's going to go down 3 and right 1. So that line would be dashed looking something like that. So when I test my test point, I'm seeing if I'm going to shade up there or down here. Y is 0 on my test point, greater than negative 3 times 0 is 0, negative 5 fourths. Is 0 bigger than a negative number? Yep, yep, yep. So we would shade above the line. A as an anteater. Page 3. What do you want? Let me see that. Okay. He's trying I think to he's get you to say chicken butt. No. No, I think he's messing with me. I think he's trying to make you say chicken butt. My phone phone, what do you want? Sorry. Absolute value of plus 3 is less than 2. Alright, less than means an and. Remember when you got an absolute value equation, you got to write two problems. So we're going to have y plus 3 is less than 2. We drop the bars in order like it is. Less than means and. Flip the sign and make everything over there the opposite. So those are the two problems that we're going to have to solve. You solve them both by subtracting 3. So that's going to get us y is less than negative 1. And y is greater than negative 5. We just subtracted 3 on both of those. Y is our up and down. So negative 1, I'm going to go down to 1. I'd be a dashed horizontal line through that, and less than that would be shaded below it. Negative 5 would be down here, dashed, greater than would be shaded above it. That is D, as in daffodil. Okay, did you get that? Don't let those good ones distract you. Fall into the good one trap. All right, number 14. Which one? Oh, my bad. Uh, that was 13, Dustin. It was D. Which one did we miss you on? Okay, no. Okay. You good? D is in dynamite. 
Caitlin, I just asked you if you got that. Yes. Sorry. So you, you fell into the hoodlum trap. I did. I tried to keep you out, and you just had to go anyway. Dustin, we got to start keeping like a better eye on Caitlin. Okay? Dustin's going to help me keep a better eye on me. Okay. Oh, I don't know what to do about these kids these days. I know. No, please don't. <laughs> Her face will turn red as that shirt. It will. I know. <laughs> I've seen it happen before. <laughs> All right, quit staring at Caitlin, Mason. Your face turned red too. Uh, decide whether those lines are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So we've already talked about the slopes of parallel and perpendicular. So we need to know the slope of these lines. That first one on the left, <coughs> I really already know the slope. It's not technically in slope intercept form, but I know the slope's negative four, but I'll go ahead and rewrite it in slope intercept form anyway. I'll just subtract that one, negative four x minus one. But there is the slope, mx plus b. Okay, this one over here, it's not a one y. So I gotta go ahead and divide by six since it's being multiplied. So that would be 18 divided by six is three, and negative six divided by six is negative one. So it has a slope of three. So those are the two slopes I'm comparing. Are they the same? No. Negative 4 is not the same as 3, so they're not parallel. Are they opposite reciprocals? No. They are opposites. This one's a negative and that one's positive, but they're not reciprocals. The reciprocal of 4 is 1 fourth, not 3. So these lines are neither. Which, what does that mean graphically? Right. They're going to intersect somewhere. It's just not going to be a 90 degree angle. It would be more obtuse, more acute. Not a <coughs> I'm ready for page four when you are. Number um, 15 is my kind of problem. They tell you the M, they tell you the B, and then they ask you to write it in MX plus B form. So all you got to do is plug the stuff in in the right spot. It says to write your answer in... Uh, well, all the choices are in slope-intercept form, so it's going to be like that. The M they give me is negative two-thirds. The B is three. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. C. As in cauliflower? I don't like cauliflower. Cauliflower is like one of but you like broccoli with like cheese and stuff. You don't like just stay. I love, oh, really? I love broccoli. Just plain? Just wet, yeah. Cool. Alright, 16. And we want the slope and the y-intercept. So it's kind of just like the bell ringer again. Gives us 2x plus 7y is equal to 25. So I'm going to rewrite this in the slope intercept form. Y equals mx plus b. So I got to solve it for y. So I'm going to subtract 2x. So 7y equals negative 2x plus 25. I don't know. I just looked at you. You were looking at me weird. So now I'm dividing by 7. Negative 2 sevenths x plus 25 sevenths. So there's your m. And there's your b. Now I think, if I'm remembering right, it wrote your b as an ordered pair, so that'd be 0, comma, 25 sevenths. Yeah. Yeah. Which was b, as in banana. Well, we and boom huh? What'd y'all put, Chase? I had b. No. Chase just didn't copy off of you on that one. You're not. Wow, well, we could they oh, couldn't no. do it in class because they had that. Uh, oh, the assembly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I was looking at seventeen. Wow. Whoops. Whoops, dude. Wonder why they changed it to the afternoon. Did anybody ever hear? Um, mm -hmm. The guy that spoke couldn't get oh. here. Well, that's a good reason. Can't have a speaker. Can't be here. What was I it like him. And I wouldn't have been it was Constitution Day. Constitution. Yeah, I always like hearing Mr. Hammer speak. He's he's a good speaker. Right. 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 Have we ever had a assembly? Good, but the little kids were screaming. Like it was. I don't know. He just released an email a while ago that said we will not have Pepo anymore. Our regular bus didn't. I don't know. Uh-uh. We already got another one. Oh, that's right. Broke down. That's right. We got Pepo. I will never forget the year when everybody was yelling, Keener is a 
it's a very classic. I remember that. It's it pretty bad. It speaks well of our school. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice and tacky. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> 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 Alright, this one, shall be quiet. 17 asks us to solve for, find g of a plus 1. So all we have to do is take a plus 1 and substitute that in for the x and simplify. So we're going to have 4, but instead of x, we're going to put a plus 1 and then plus 1. So we would distribute the 4, 4a plus 4. Plus one, you can combine that, so it'll be four a plus five, which is d, as in doofus. <laughs> hey, we ready for eighteen? Okay, okay. Eighteen took me a while, so everybody get ready for it. Not really a while, but probably the longest of any of them. Oh, 18? That took me no time at all. Well, we don't have an answer, actually. Get it. I'm trying to get everything oh, done. Okay. I don't know. Flip through. No, we did try it. I like it. I didn't try it. Okay. I'm not going to get <coughs> super duper specific on the graph, but I do want to have an idea of where these points are for 18, so I'm going to look at them a little bit. Uh, negative 10, negative 4. So they'd be about in that area. Label them, that's going to help me. Negative 10, negative 4. Then I'm going to have negative 1, negative 18. Then I got 13, negative 9. And then my last one is 4, 5. <coughs> Alright, so the question says would those form a rectangle, parallelogram, or neither? Alright, so what we know about a rectangle and a parallelogram, rectangle and parallelogram both opposite sides have to be parallel, right? But on a rectangle, the angles have to be a 90 degree angle, which means those sides would have to be perpendicular. So that's going to be the difference, okay, whether or not we've got parallel and perpendicular stuff going on here. So just start, pick you a pair and start finding the slope. I'm going to check the slope right here. So I'm going to do 5 minus negative 4. My y's for where I dotted that line over 4 minus negative 10. So the slope of that line would be 9 fourteenths, right? So there I've got 9 fourteenths. Now this one's to be to stay on track here and not be a neither. This one also has to be 9 fourteenths, right? So that'll be negative 9 minus negative 18 over 13 minus negative 1. Negative 9 minus negative 18 is 9. 13 minus negative 1 is 14. So these opposite sides are parallel. So, so far, it could be a rectangle or a parallelogram either. Now i got to check these insides, right? Okay, so right here I'm going to do negative 18 minus negative 4 over negative 1 minus negative 10. So that's negative 14 over 9. So this one would have negative 14 over 9. Now, is that perpendicular to this one? Does that make a 90 degree angle? Yes. Opposite reciprocals right there where my mouse is going back and forth, right? Yes. So we're on track to be a rectangle if this pair is also negative 14 nines. It'll be a rectangle. Yes. So Chase is saying, yeah, let's check it out over here and see. Negative 9 minus 5 over 13 minus 4, negative 9 minus 5 is negative 14, 13 minus 4 is 9. So that one was negative 14 nines. So opposite sides here are parallel, yes. Parallel here, yes. Opposite reciprocals, yes. Which makes that thing a rectangle. What if they had all just been parallel but not opposite reciprocals? Then it would have been a parallelogram. What if not all of them would have been parallel? Then it would have been an either. Right? All right, all right, all right. That's okay. a, I like those kinds of problems, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. Opposite parallels and perpendicular on the corners. Is that a good way to say that? No. Kaylee said it was. She's being sassy over there since I called her irresponsible earlier. Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Rutledge says that number 19 is B. Let's check him out and see. Since my marker starts working. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get that off there. Oh, Lord. We got just a little bit of stuff in there. All right. First thing I notice on number 19 is it says I have to go through the point 10, 0. So I would go over 10 and up 0. My line has to go through that point. Looking at my choices, choice A does not. Right? Choice B does. B does. That's good. You got to flip. I hate flipping on grass, but you got to flip. Choice C does not go through that point. Choice D does not go through that point. So Chase has to be correct. It has to be B. But what if there was another one that did? What would we do? Now, good, Chase. Now we would take our slope, which is negative one half. So from this point, I would go down one, right two. Then I could go down one again, right two. Down one again, right two. Until I get enough to connect that line. And it was B. Good job. Last one. 2020. Go ahead. <coughs> <coughs> All right. On 20, it says find an equation of a line that goes through 4, 5, and has the slope negative 6, 7. So this one. It did not tell us the y-intercept. So I could use the point and the slope and go to point slope, or I could use the point and the slope and go to slope intercept. Anybody care? Okay, I'm gonna do slope intercept. I just think that's quicker. May not be for everybody, but I like it better. So my point four five, that's gonna go in your x, that's gonna go in your y, and then it told you the slope. So I'm just going to plug all that in and solve for B, and then we'll go to standard form from there. So I got Y equals M X plus B, and that is negative 24 sevenths. So I got to add 24 sevenths to both sides. See, that'd be 35 sevenths, so that would be... 59, thank you, Aaron. 59 sevenths is my B. So I'm going to have Y equals M. Oops, dumb button. Oh, Lord. Flip that down. Y equals M. X plus B. Now, if my choices were in slope intercept form, I'd be good, but there's not a choice that says that. All the choices are AX plus BY equals C, so I gotta move the 6 sevenths X over. It's a negative, so I'm gonna add it. So I have 6 sevenths X plus Y is equal to 59 sevenths. Now, to get rid of those fractions, because my choices don't have fractions, what would I multiply all that by? Seven, seven always by that denominator. So I'm gonna multiply all that by seven. Come on, you've done good. We're almost done. How long, marker? I'm going to follow that by sub 7. So when I take it here, I just drew and it didn't draw. Okay. The 7 over 7 will cancel out, so it'll just be a 6. Come on. Finish this problem. It's a nice one. Silly, stupid board. Sevens will cancel, so I'll just have 6x, 7y, sevens will cancel, so I'll just have 59. And that's it. What choice is that, Dustin? D. D, as in Dustin. D. Boom. Sweet action. All right, you got notes that you'll want to use on the test tomorrow, you can. You can use your study guide if you want to. Very good? Okay.